the countdown has begun to the first total solar eclipse over New York in over 99 years, and it's just 24 hours away. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to witness the majesty of God's creation as the eyes from the earth look to the heavens. It'll be breathtaking to see the sun covered in its totality, leaving us mere mortals in darkness for over three minutes. First of all, Commissioner Bray, I want to thank you and your whole team at the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services for the preparations, uh, the intent, seriousness of which we brought to this, treating it like it's one of the big blizzards, as we've treating it as if it's one of the big storms, and so we want to make sure that we keep people safe. Also, our Acting Commissioner Randy Simons of Office of Parks and Recreation, you'll be hearing from him to talk about how our state parks, including the one and only Niagara Falls State Park, are re ready for this rare event. Uh, Jessica DeSerce, she doesn't want to be called this, but we're going to call her anyhow, the Eclipse Czar. She's done an amazing job, and I thank her and all the representatives that she's worked with from Parks Police, State Police, and we are literally over the moon to welcome over one million people to our state for this once-in-a-generation moment. Some people across the state have traveled hundreds of miles. Others from out of town have traveled thousands of miles to come, and for one good reason, the stars are truly aligned for New York. We'll have incredible visibility here. This total eclipse will pass through some of the most beautiful backdrops our state has to offer, from Letchworth State Park to the gorgeous Adirondack Mountains, the shores of Lake Erie, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and of course, breathtaking Niagara Falls, which has been selected by NASA to launch their eclipse headquarters. So we'll be joining them tomorrow. We've partnered with their brilliant team to host a series of exhibitions at our state park, and these are free and give people really a deeper understanding of the science behind this incredible spectacle that we'll be experiencing tomorrow. So make sure everybody checks those out. And if you're bringing the kids, these educational events are a great way to spark an interest in science that can last a lifetime and can take them anywhere, literally anywhere. The other day, I had the opportunity to speak virtually with Dr. Jeanette Epps, a young woman from Syracuse, Syracuse born and raised. She was at the International Space Station as a trained astronaut who at age nine decided she wanted to venture into the possibility of becoming an astronaut someday. So the kids are not too young to get inspired by this event. We also had an overwhelming response from students who sent in questions for Dr. Epps ahead of our event. So she's an inspiration to all of us and she'll not just be exciting the kids, but she'll be one of the first astronauts to be able to witness a total solar eclipse from space. So we had a chance to talk to her about that. Check that out. Another exciting dynamic is welcoming all these visitors. Our small businesses are basking in the limelight. They're going to be welcoming people from all over as people see how our hidden gems are scattered all across the state, the small businesses, the restaurants, the diners, the bakery, everybody's getting ready to prepare special eclipse themed food, so you have to check that out. And we know that those who are visiting for the first time will definitely want to come back. Now, remember, the full eclipse will only last for just a few minutes, and our team has spent over 17 months preparing for this event to make sure that you can experience it safely and enjoyably. I want to go over just a few tips to make sure you have the best possible viewing experience. First of all, many, many of you have traveled and figured this out. For those of you who are staying home, know where you want to watch this. And in fact, the safest, easiest place may be your own backyard if you're living in Western New York or anywhere else across the state. But in New York, we know that the path of totality goes through Jamestown. Rochester, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, and on to Plattsburgh. You can go to ilovenewyork.com slash eclipse for a calendar of our events all across the state, and there's still many more today and tomorrow. You can also find out the exact times that the eclipse will be passing through each city on its path so you're ready and looking up at the right time. A second tip is keep an eye on the forecast and the conditions in the area you're going to. Some of our areas, particularly in the North Country, had an unprecedented snowfall just a short time ago. The ground is wet. There could be still some rough conditions. If you're planning on going in the back country, there may be some areas that are not accessible to you. So you really want to check all this out in advance. But uh, overall, we're looking for good conditions across the state. But perhaps one of the most important, 
build in lots of travel time. We are warning everyone, the roads can only handle so much and we're expecting a ex high, high volume of traffic before and after the event as people go to the destinations they want to visit. Like I said, our state parks, the waterfronts, the mountains, uh, all the way over to Niagara Falls, where I hope to be if we can make some progress here. So with this huge influx of visitors, especially in some of the remote parts of our state, truly you need to expect extended traffic delays. So pack your patience along with snacks and water and make sure you have a full tank of gas. We've been in communication with our gas stations all across New York. Be ready, fill up in advance. You do not want to run out of fuel in the middle of a jam-packed roadway, as has happened in past experiences across the country. We've taken a lot of lessons. When last time there was a major event like this, there were 10-hour delays, people stranded in their vehicles out west, and so we just want people to know that can happen, so be aware of it and plan accordingly. And as you're traveling, I know you'll be tempted to pull off the side of the road and, and look up to the heavens from the shoulder. Please don't do that. If we need emergency vehicles to get through, our first responders will use that as the best place for them to get to, possibly you and your family quickly. So, so let's make sure we're cognizant of that as well. And take proper precautions during the eclipse. Don't be blinded by the light. In anticipation, we have these incredibly cool glasses. These are going to be a collector's item after this date. Pass them on to your children and grandchildren through generations. These are very exciting and people have been wanting these. They are definitely a hot commodity. Make sure that you protect your eyes from the light. Staring at the sun during the eclipse without proper eye protection can literally do permanent damage to your vision. And so to make sure you're doing that, they have to be not just your ordinary sunglasses, but special solar eclipsed solar filters have to be involved here. So make sure that you're prepared with the right glasses. Now, in conclusion, we are so excited to welcome people from all across the country and indeed the world to witness the wonders of our universe at hand. Tomorrow will be a very special and unforgettable day for all of us. A once in a century event, it'll be beautiful and profound and for one brief moment, New Yorkers and our visitors, people all across this great country, will be bonded in the shared experience that we'll be telling our children and grandchildren about for the rest of their lives. So don't rush, take your time. Everybody's excited, so be courteous to each other. Prioritize your safety and the safety of your family, and everyone have a spectacular time. Thank you very much, and let me turn it back to Commissioner Jackie Bray. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate that. And, and I, I also want to thank Justice Erse, who is, who is right here, our, our, um, our Eclipse czar. And I want to take a second to thank Jen Waka, who has been leading public safety planning for the Eclipse as well. Let me start by just reiterating a handful of safety tips, and then I'm going to talk through our preparation. As the governor said, we do expect traffic. One really good resource in New York State is 511NY. Uh, there's an Apple and an Android app that you can download today uh, that can help you have real-time information and also help you see alternative routes uh, to places that are um, blocked. As, she, as the governor said, make sure that you top up your fuel, make sure that you have a full charge, make sure that you bring snacks and water. Uh, I want to take a second to talk to folks that are going to the eastern and northeast part of our state, particularly in the Adirondacks. It is mud season. Uh, it is really wet. Uh, the back country is going to be hazardous, so we're asking folks to try to stay out of the back country, stay on well-marked trails, uh, and really, really only park uh, in designated parking areas at the trailheads. Um, as the governor said, parking it, parking's a big deal for us, so please do not park on the side of the roads. I want to reiterate, we will be ticketing and towing rapidly tomorrow morning particularly up in the North Country. So if you are up in the North Country, if you are on uh, two-lane roads, we will be ticketing you, we will be towing you, uh, and that's really uh, simply because it's a public safety hazard for us to not be able to move emergency vehicles through. Let me talk a little bit about prep. We started prepping for this in October of 2022. Uh, 20, we've been prepping along with 29 counties who are uh, within the, have a portion within the um, path of totality. 
Uh, we are organizing ourselves tomorrow. There'll be a, the State Operations Center in Albany is opening at 8 a.m. We're opening a regional operations center in the Lake Placid area and a regional operations center in the Buffalo area. In addition, we'll be opening the Fire Operations Center also at 8 a.m. Uh, in terms of our road preparations, we have 100 help trucks uh, ready to go. Help trucks will be on state roads and the throughway, uh, moving any disabled vehicles over and doing that quickly. They'll have uh, fuel in case people run out of gas. They'll have water. Uh, they'll have things that can quickly fix a flat tire if, if we need that, um, all in the uh, uh, service of keeping traffic moving. Uh, some of those help trucks will also uh, be able to recharge an electric vehicle uh, if folks lose a charge. We will have over four dozen tow trucks uh, pre-positioned uh, in order to quickly move uh, any vehicles that are disabled or that run out of gas or run out of charge. The New York State Police will have four strike teams or four, uh, will have strike teams uh, across four different of their troop areas. Those teams will be able to deploy to roadways that get particularly congested or particularly dangerous. Uh, in addition, between the Department of Environmental Conservation, the Parks Department, State Police, State Fire. We have ATVs, UTVs, uh, and motorcycles uh, that will be uh, deploying in order to get to hard to reach uh, individuals and um, roads. Uh, our state fire team is deploying two task forces. Task forces have technical rescue capability, including swift water rescue capability, uh, and they have unmanned um, aerial systems drones uh, in order to assist, along with large refueling tankers. We will be sending a wireless emergency alert in the Adirondack area to remind people not to park on the sides of the roads tomorrow morning uh, and to let folks know that we will be ticketing and towing. We have over two dozen boats uh, that we're deploying uh, between our Parks Department and our Division of Environmental Conservation in order to get ahead of any uh, maritime issues. Those boats will be in Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Seneca Lake, Oneida Lake, Cayuga Lake, Lake Champlain, the Old Forge area, the St. Lawrence River, the Fairhaven Beach State Park, Buffalo's Outer Harbor, and the Upper Niagara River. We are deploying our aviation assets. Those include both fixed wings and rotary uh, aircraft for emergency response, along with over a dozen drones to give us real-time traffic information and real-time looks uh, at roads that we don't have uh, cameras on or access to. The State Department of Health is deploying 20 ambulances strategically placed across the state uh, in anticipation of potentially needing additional uh, EMS capacity. And uh, last but not least, I just want to touch on the weather. Uh, it is going to be a dry day tomorrow in New York. Uh, the temperatures will be mild, so we'll have highs in the mid-60s, low in the mid-40s. Uh, we do anticipate some cloud cover out west, uh, extending to the western edge of the Adirondacks. Uh, that seems to be getting more and more likely, uh, that there'll be additional cloud cover. We do expect a very minimal cloud cover in the Plattsburgh area and the sort of northeast of our state. And with that, I'm going to introduce Randy Simons, our Acting Parks Commissioner. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor. Commissioner, it's always a pleasure to stand with you. And I've never been in a room with Eclipse on it, so this is a, this is a first for, for a lot of us. I get to talk about all the fun stuff uh, and also just to emphasize our readiness on, on the state park side. Look, we're one day away, right, from the universe putting on the show of shows, right? It's going to be a great cosmic display. And New York State is really the center stage for a lot of this. You heard the governor. Everywhere from western New York, Finger Lakes, Allegheny, central New York, the Adirondacks, North Country, Thousand Islands. And think about all the awe-inspiring locations within those regions. You're going to hear me talk about a lot of state parks. That's what I'm paid to do. So Buffalo Harbor State Park, Niagara Falls. I mean, can you think of a better backdrop uh, than right here? Allegheny State Park, Letchworth, you heard the governor. Uh, you have Green Lakes, Fairhaven, Southwick, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, so with all those, uh, some of those awe-inspiring backdrops, millions are going to descend on New York, specifically in the path of totality, uh, but really all across uh, New York State. Uh, and, and I want to emphasize the readiness that we are here at State Parks. And while this uh, experience will be unforgettable uh, for all, uh, it also is reliant on our visitors uh, and their readiness as well. So at State Parks, what are we doing? 
uh, you know, to uh, increase accommodation uh, all across the state, especially in the path of totality. Uh, we opened up a lot of campgrounds early this year. Uh, proud to say we're 100% occupied uh, on tonight. Uh, and really what's equally uh, nice to hear is tomorrow night we're 93% occupied. So what does that tell us? that people are heeding the warning, right? They're coming, they're not just going to witness the eclipse and leave, uh, but they're going to stay. They're gonna make an experience out of it, and that will certainly help us out on the traffic side as well. Uh, we are increasing presence at all our parks uh, in the path of totality and outside the totality. Uh, park police, uh, park rangers, uh, and our park staff were a thousand strong just at the parks in the path of totality and thousands more uh, in, in, in parks outside the uh, path, uh, you know, because obviously 100% you know, is, is where you want to be, uh, but still the experience uh, will be a quite incredible uh, in, in areas outside the path of totality as well. Uh, all parks, uh, you know, within the path of totality, uh, you know, I want to emphasize uh, at many of our parks, uh, parking, uh, we're expecting it will fill to capacity really early. Now, this is not uncommon. Uh, you know, at our parks on a great summer day, you know, on a weekend or, or weekday, uh, we do fill pretty quickly. Uh, so some tips for you all, uh, for our visitors, uh, get here early, right? Stay late, you've heard that. But also just have an alternative plan, another location that you may want to experience the eclipse. And also GPS oftentimes uh, will take you to one parking lot within a park and just know like at Niagara Falls, it takes you to the main parking area, but there are other parking lots uh, within the park that you are going to. So really just be uh, familiar uh, with sort of the park footprint or the footprint or where you're visiting uh, at any location. You heard the commissioner, right? We're encouraging visitors uh, to stay in the safe spots to witness the eclipse. You know, avoid the backcountry, as you heard. Uh, avoid going off trail. You're not going to find a better experience by doing that uh, within the park confines or within sort of these safe designated areas. Uh, you'll get the full experience of the eclipse. Uh, in addition to 511, our state parks explore app. We're going to be doing push notifications all day long. You're going to get the latest on parking. You're going to get the latest on sort of park closures. Uh, you know, if we do fill the capacity uh, and all the park information that you'll need to know. So that's the readiness uh, and now the fun part. I mean, we've packed in sort of, uh, you know, in addition to packing the patients, we've packed in plenty of fun over uh, uh, the next few days. Uh, you know, and how about NASA, right? NASA being here at Niagara Falls. Uh, I want to also mention the Canadian Space Agency. They have multiple days of science, public education, and more. Uh, you know, downstairs, uh, I went through the experience uh, in, in about a, a half hour to an hour, and I'll tell you, it was incredible. Uh, you're going to uh, have plenty of opportunities to meet and greet astronauts and, and, and space engineers. Uh, uh, the Canadian Space Agency brought out a virtual reality experience. It's about an eight-minute experience, and it literally puts you on the International Space Station. You can appreciate obviously you know you know what is out there with the infrastructure and the technology uh and, and i learned about artemis 2 right this is uh this is set to go up in 2025 uh to, to circle the moon which is ultimately will lead to artemis 3 in 2028 which will put the first woman on the moon uh in history so again all of this that we're learning this education it, it it's deepening and connecting our experience to what we'll see tomorrow uh and pretty thrilled to have nasa and the canadian space agency here uh, so with that special programming across our parks, uh, both inside the path of totality and outside, uh, you know, and, and music, games, food, fun, festivals, and more, uh, 84 million visitors uh, visit our parks each year. We're expecting much more in the centennial year, uh, and our teams, uh, you know, certainly stand at the ready. So if visitors come prepared uh, as well tomorrow, uh, they will have an unforgettable experience. Uh, so with that, with our centennial tagline, I'll leave you. We'll see you out there. <laughs> Yay. Uh, any questions? When you said 100% uh, of the park, do you mean like all the parks in New York or in the path of totality? What, what is that? What is that talk? What does that mean? So as far as security or readiness? 100% um, occupancy. Occupy. So, so we open campgrounds. So typically campgrounds open up in the May uh, in the path of totality because of the uh, sort of the onslaught of uh, accommodations that they were seeking. We opened up uh, uh, dozens of campgrounds within the path of totality, Western New York, Finger Lakes, up through uh, Central and the North Country, South and Thousand Islands. Uh, so those campgrounds are at 100%. So everything you've opened basically in the path of totality. On, on tonight, they are 100%, and then 93, and then drops like 90%. So people are staying for a few days, even a week. So it's, it's Plattsburgh, 
Is that that's where you got to be? I mean, uh. <laughs> <laughs> here's what I will say. You know, um, uh, we do. You know, Plattsburgh will have the least cloud cover. There, there's no sort of um, you know uh, question about that. Um, we expect a somewhere between 60 and 80 percent cloud cover out here. Uh, what we don't have, uh, you know, what we won't know is how high those clouds are. If the higher the clouds are, the better shot we all have at um, sort of all of the bells and whistles of an eclipse. But no matter what, this is going to be an experience. No matter what, it's going to get, you know, it will be midnight dark, uh, you know, within minutes. Uh, no matter what, you'll see, you know, the wildlife will go quiet. Um, and, and it will be an experience regardless of where you are. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow Plattsburgh will have the least cloud cover. What, what if anything has been done as far as uh, security concerns, especially at the metropolitan number of people and the potential for disruption to cell service? Yeah, absolutely. So let me just say that if there is disruption to cell service, 911 will continue to work. Uh, we have been in regular touch with AT&T and Verizon uh, about maintaining um, both 911 specifically and, and broader cell coverage. There is a Wi-Fi network in Niagara Park or State Park, which will help offset some of the volume. But I won't. I would not be surprised if cellular circuits are overloaded during different points of the day. Um, it, you know, if that happens, make sure that you are only calling 911 in the event of an emergency. Uh, being stuck on the road without cell re reception, if you are okay, is not an emergency. Um, in addition, we have moved some assets, they're called cults, uh, into certain strategic locations. Uh, those provide even more robust cell coverage, uh, but they do it over a pretty narrow area. Uh, so they're, you know, the safety operations will have backup cell coverage tomorrow. And if I can, I would like to point out, certainly uh, Park Police, we've uh, increased the presence by 200% here at Niagara Falls, uh, additional park rangers and park staff. Uh, and then when we look at our partnerships with state police and local law enforcement, uh, you'll be hard pressed to sort of, you know, turn in a, in a full 360, at least in Niagara Falls, and not to see, you know, sort of some presence. And, and, and knowing that these, uh, these uh, you know, individuals uh, are, are also points of information as well. They can assist you uh, with any needs or questions you have in the parks as well. Thanks so much.